So looking at the Continental Flying Spur 09 model year chassis changes, then we've concentrated on softening off the suspension, the, the springs, the dampers, and also paying particular attention to the suspension bushes in order to improve the ride comfort for the occupants. And that's particularly true for, for the rear seat occupants. So to complement those chassis changes, we developed a new tyre for this model. This is the new 19-inch tyre, and what we've done is to take the learning from the GT Speed 20-inch tyre, and what we've done is to adopt the same construction here. And what we found in the GT Speed development is that this construction offers improvements in both handling and steering, but also in ride comfort. So we've got a win-win situation with this new tyre. With all the work that's gone on, it sort of gives a more refined, relaxed atmosphere for both me in the front and I assume for the passenger in the rear. I'll find out when I do ultimately get in the back seat. But the, the feeling that I've got is from the driving aspect, because that's what I'm doing. And there's just this effortless um, form of driving, which the car absorbs the bumps, it goes around the corner very smoothly. It does ev everything effortlessly, and I think that is probably what I'm trying to say. The actual feedback through the steering, it's a very positive feedback, which this car's always had. Tremendous feedback, but it's, it's lost a lot of its, of the sort of the impact that came back through the steering. It's now a very much finer, more delicate feedback that I'm getting through the car, yet really, really very positive. So when I actually go to do something, it's there. I mean, immediately, it's there. And it, 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 it's just there. And that's what you need. It's no good having a car that has all these uh, attributes, and then when you actually go to drive it, it doesn't respond. This car has all these beautiful attributes, and then when I go to make a sudden move to avoid a, you know, a rock in the road, it doesn't re it, the car just moves and it does it. So let's go and have a look at the Continental Flying Spur Speed. For this car, we've introduced a number of changes to improve the dynamic performance of the vehicle. We've solid mounted the front subframe. That gives an excellent steering feel and a linear response to the chassis. We've changed the bushes on the rear axle for the same reason. We've also lowered the ride height of the vehicle to give a, a better appearance, a more sporty appearance. And we've applied the GT Speed wheel and tyre combination. So this is the 20-inch wheel which gives us an excellent sporty response and character to the vehicle. Well, as you can imagine, being a racing driver, the one thing that I always love is the ultimate in power and the ultimate in speed. And I've had just that driving this car. It's quite amazing to realize that this actually is a flying spur speed. The handling of the car really is superb and I've really enjoyed driving it today. But I think it's been down to the fact the engineers of the factory have stiffened the whole car up. They made it torter. They made it a little bit more agile than it was. And this is due to the fact they created a solid mounted subframe and in fact improved the rear suspension links, which of course overall makes the car a little bit more stiffer, a little bit more stable. They've created stiffer springs all around, slightly heavier damping. And this has made the car the most superb car to drive. You better get out there and have a go. I've enjoyed it very much. So in summary, we've got two great driver's cars, but the Continental Flying Spur Speed will appeal more to the guy for whom driving is the important thing, the guy that wants a responsive chassis. Whereas the Continental Flying Spur will appeal more to the guy for whom comfort and refinement are the important factors.